Ladies and gentlemen, we are doing it. Uh, episode one, take three. <laughs> We've uh, we've we've uh, condensed the studio a little bit. We've only used two chairs. Sometimes we you know since we started shooting the show, it's been four chairs and we went to three chairs. Then we got rid of a Jew, and now we uh, have. <laughs> I'm joking. We have. He's here in spirit. He is here in spirit, <laughs> and he here. will be here in a little bit. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Brady Matthews. This is the mouthpiece makes Vegas pay. And you're like, what is that? It's sports. It's comedy. It's a little bit of everything. It's a hodgepodge, if you will, uh, including sports gambling. Um, we have a lot to get to, uh, including recap of week one, which we tried to do with the past couple episodes, but it didn't work, but that's okay. We're here to do it again. Not that it's Simon's fault. But Not that it's Simon's fault. It's no one's fault. It's so right. We're just we're just like step parents. Correct. And we're just trying to figure we're it trying out. Trying to figure it out as we move Trying on. to figure it out. Lots to recap. Uh, week one, we have also week two coming up. Later in the show, we have a whole separate segment for you guys that you guys are going to love for Make Vegas Pay with Ray's picks for UFC and Simon's picks for week two NFL. So stick around for that. That's going to be exciting. But with that said, let me introduce my co-host, my guy, my number one, my ride or die, uh, he has the best chest hair this side of the 95. Back, baby. He's the one and only <laughs> Raymond Sherwood, everyone. It's back. Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. How are we feeling? We, Ray, we're look we're at energized. Us. Wait, look, we're, do, we're look, doing look, it. Look, are we doing it? Are we doing it? It's two guys, one plant. <laughs> two guys, one plant. <laughs> two guys, one plant. There we go. Shout out to our friends. But <laughs> shout, out, shout out to our buddy. Yeah, we're you know, competition here, girls. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, right? I'm feeling good. Feels It took us a while to get here. Yeah, but we, look at us. We fucking did yeah, it. Look, we look at found us a way. Look at us now, assholes. Listen, <laughs> we're canceled after episode three, but we found a way. We did it. We did it. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, we have a ton of things to cover today. Lots On to top cover. of that, what, what we're going to do for the rest of the future, man. We're going to kill it, and I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to get this I mean, rolling. I'm excited to hear your picks for UFC. Don't say anything yet. Don't tease it. I'm not teasing. But do you, are you more excited or less excited? Let's go with the excitement uh, at first. Where are we at excitement level? Do you oh, like the man. sphere? Do you think it'd be better in a different like environment, or do you think the sphere we, is going to like be the spot? We are going to dive into this a little bit later, but it's very strange. I I can't tell. Sounds it's like you it's don't one like of those it. where like when it happens, happens when we get there live and we see it then i'll have a good reaction it's gonna be weird how it's gonna be televised there's only 10 fights there's normally 12 to 14 uh it's why is it only 10 i don't no one knows it's this is very strange because there's this is the largest uh, at least money and production costs it's ever been dumped for dumped before on anything in the ufc's ever done before they're spending over 50 million dollars and we get to, we're gonna dive into ticket costs yes, and I everything have later yep. but just real quick i'll touch upon it now sure. why is it is that it's Technically, UFC Noche, based in Las Vegas in the U.S., but sponsored by Riyadh Season, which is in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia. It doesn't make any sense to me. It almost sounds like Little Caesar sponsoring Papa John's, brought to you by so, Domino's so, so, Pizza. You know, but, but sponsored by <laughs> Crumb Cookies. Like, it's like, what yeah. the fuck is going on? What are we mixing here? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I get it. Money is money is a, a major factor in this, sure. and those Saudis are dumping into it with Dana behind the scenes. So I don't even know what El Noche is. What is that? No, Noche. It's like it's Mexican. And Independence Day. I so. thought it was a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be Noche sponsored by Modelo. It should have been Noche. Doesn't it sound like a beer? It should have been Noche sponsored by Modelo, guys. Totally. You fucked up here. You had it. It was laid up. Their main sponsor in the 100%. UFC. hundred percent. Fucked up here. Dana, come on. Come yeah. On I don't know. Well, I'm excited to get to it, and I'm excited to see what you think about um, Sugar Sean, right? Correct. Yep. yep. We're going to dive into it. Uh, there's a, a lot of things that go into that fight. Um, you know what's weird about that? And can I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Why his hair, uh, listen. It changes. I, I know, but, <laughs> but I'm saying, like, fighters obviously can do what I could never do. All I do is talk into a microphone and hope people like it. What they do is they kick ass, but also they're like, you know what? Give me that Fruity Pebble look. What? Yeah. What is it that, that does he ever say why he does it he, to his hair? I mean, realistically, as a UFC fighter too, you have to remember it's markability. It's you become not just a fighter; you are now an entertainer in the right. mainstream media. So he's found an angle to have that look to stand out per se, and he also has the fighting uh, capabilities to yeah. make it entertaining as well. Yeah. And it's funny because he actually got called out by Kill Tony at the Tom Brady roast by going, yeah, "You're sitting <laughs> yeah, next to a bunch yeah. of gay guys." He called basically Sean that's O'Malley gay. So <laughs> which that's is hilarious. A clip. Bank clip it. <laughs> um, speaking of clips, I, I, dude, and I have to get this out of the way. I'm sorry. And again, this is a sports betting majority podcast. But listen, sometimes, but sometimes <laughs> we like to throw things into the mix 
um, that is current events. This is relevant. And realistically, Go Brady, ahead. and you could say this as well, is you could technically bet on the debate, which we're going to get to. Yeah, you technically could bet on the debate, and we're definitely going to get to that. But I have to show you something first. I, I, I went for a run this morning, and I watched this guy. Um, he killed two women. <laughs> Way to start off. He we're killed. Not two. We're not laughing at the actual. It's fact, not guys. funny. No, it's, like, it's, it's not, not funny. The funny only to reason kill women. why I bring this up is because if we're going to be talking about serial killers, <laughs> the debate. Listen, if we're going to be talking serial killers. This guy oh killed two God. women, and guess what? Women love this guy. His name is Wade Wilson, right? And he's talking to a girl uh, that I guess he was kind of like hooking up with before he went into jail. Listen to what they talk about. I couldn't believe it. I had to stop on my run and was like. Yo, is this bitch for real? This this is I don't know if remember Ted Bundy back in the day. Did you know Ted Bundy back in the day had women Women loved him. All yeah. over him. Women loved they him. Lo they loved him. They loved women loved him, right? This is what's happening with this guy. Correct. He you right, he uses people uses people to put money on the books for him, yep. right? Like his dad, he, he's a master manipulator. Ray, I'm going to play it right here. He's a sick fuck. And listen listen to what he's listen to this, right? I know. Did you not see how much blood came out of my <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, baby. I was trying. <laughs> that was a baby. That was an intense punch. I didn't even mean. He punched her. Hold on. He punched her, and then he goes. She goes. Did you see how much blood came out of my eyes? What the? Hell? You, by the way, <laughs> did you hear the music they're playing in the background? And Ray, watch this. Why watch this, Ray? You're gonna be like, what the. Fuck? I'm surprised Dana's not throwing this on UFC. No, dude, put this on. <laughs> put this on the car. Put this on the sphere. By the way, his tattoos the for the people at home. Look up Wade Wilson's tattoos. Looks he like got the, the tattoos like the Joker, and then he's got a swastika right here. And also, he got a swastika because I don't know if you know. When you're in jail, you got to find your boys. It's black. It's white. It's Latino. That's it. It's very racial or structured off. Whatever. He got it. The guy. He got these tattoos. They want nothing to do with them. So he talks on the phone all day. Play the role. Here we go. I didn't even. I'm like, I'm no, baby, I was trying. He's laughing. Beat me up my whole life. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Yeah, no shit, dude. You took that. I'm going to tell you the truth, baby. You took that punch like a fucking champion. <laughs> like, I know you do, and I hate myself for doing that. But I'll tell you what, you were like, you were like Floyd Mayweather taking that punch, baby. You were like Muhammad Ali taking that shit. But that it's not okay. He's saying it like it's a compliment. Yes, Ray. She's calling. She's putting money on the yeah. books for him. Yeah, no. It's not okay that you are. <laughs> it was not okay, baby. I was trying to talk to you and tell you like what happened, basically. And Dude, how do you justify I don't know. like that? Yo, you know what's crazy too? Ray. No, David, you're right. It, it is fucking crazy. It's not like he has. By, by the way, it's not like he has money. <laughs> no, but also I. So I. I've, I remember when this was live. He was talking. He has no remorse. If you look up his tapes, like outside of here, it's like him talking like. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't care. He has no remorse for anything. No. He goes, yeah, I drove over that girl and I wanted her to be spaghetti and stuff like that. He doesn't care. Oh, so you do know about I, it. I know about this guy. Okay, so Ray. Yeah, this guy's a sick fuck. He's totally sick and yeah. he laughs about all of it. Yeah, no, and he has no remorse. What's, what's scary to me, Ray, is like people uh, love him. He's a legit they sick. They love him. Week one NFL. Week one NFL, right? We all saw what we saw. The thing that I thought was so great about week one NFL is how it kicked off. How it kicked off, and it does kick off with fireworks. Everyone's like, it's scripted, it's scripted. Great. I love a great scripted show because that's what fucking NFL is. It is literally <laughs> soap opera for men, and I'm here for all of it, right? Tyree Kill, you saw this. Let's just recap for the people at home. Tyree Kill, people were talking about saying these cops were too aggressive to him. Listen, if you comply with the cops, usually you can leave after you show them proper identification or whatever else they need to be on your merry way. One, he did speed, and two, he did not comply. And three, he's sitting there going, we need to find a common ground in between uh, black people and cops, and we're all... Listen, watch the tape, okay? Watch how they, they approached his window. Also, he was speeding, just so you know. He was speeding. He sped past him. Did he go super fast? No. Is he a pro athlete and they should have known that? 110% you let the motherfucker go. You're ruining everyone's fantasy draft, and two, you guys look like cocksuckers. But let's roll the tape. Let me show you. Don't knock on my window like that. Don't knock on my window like that, he says. Why don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window like that, no. Like what? Don't knock on my window like that. Why you have it up? Don't knock on my window like that. Why you have it up? I have to knock to let you know I'm here. Don't knock that way you can lower it and talk to you. Give me my ticket, bro, so I can go. I'm finna be late, gang. Do what you gotta do. 
I mean, when you keep if, it down. Hey. Yeah, you don't roll up the window. Keep like your that. window down. Hey. Keep your window down. Keep your window down. I'm gonna get you out of the car. As a matter of fact, get out of the car. Get out of the car. I mean, this is obviously now it's gotten too much. Yeah, and then it gets the point of it. We're not playing All right. this game. Yeah, get see, the cops, the cops got too aggressive, but that's what they do. But also, he's trying to get to the game. Obviously, the hype is, is you know, it's at a 10. Ray, do you think the cops overreacted, I'm, or do you think Tyree gonna, Kill was I'm out of play, pocket? I'm going to play moderator just because, like I said, I have a ton of experience, at least in law enforcement. And that's what I got my undergrad in. Sure. I come from a family of law enforcement. Right. So it's The a, Sherwoods. The, the Sherwoods. <laughs> and um, <laughs> pretty much how, how I see this one is he didn't comply in the beginning. 100% in terms of safety policies, regardless if they know who they are. You know what I mean? Everyone wants to justify, it's Tyreek Hill. They should know. He was speeding. They don't know. It's tinted windows. Probably an NFL guy. But, you know, he's fucking flying. You know, I think some people reported like almost 70 miles an hour in a 25. Like something yeah. crazy. Something yeah. where it's I mean, clearly where they're like, hey, bud, what the fuck? You know, could they have came in a little bit softer? Yes, but also Ty how Tyreek don't that's his first reaction is don't knock. That's what you're gonna first initiate with. Don't knock on my window like that. Yeah. Now you're now creating you're being, a yeah. confrontation. For sure. As a police law enforcement, you should also try to de escalate, but I could see where that triggered the law enforcement being like, Why why are you coming at me? So it makes no sense. And then on top of that, in terms of safety purposes, you never roll up your window on a tinted fucking car after they tell you. Because that could be something, grab a gun and they roll it up, boom. They don't know. So that's there's reasons behind why I say get the fuck out of the car. Yeah, I don't know. See, you I'm have to remember, it's safety purposes as well. Did they handle it a little aggressively? I do believe they did. But like at the end of the day, I believe that there's rights and wrongs on both sides. Yeah. But a hundred percent, you sh can't blame law enforcement abusement. First off, and then like a lot of people, oh, it's racist. They're fucking Hispanic cops. No, you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. Wanna, uh, God forbid it was well, another uh, race. But besides <laughs> that, um, you know, it, it's uh, we're just gonna get flagged on everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, maybe. maybe. But I, but but <laughs> the only, but the but the only thing is is that that I'll play devil's advocate is one you're hyped up two you're you know you're going to play an NFL game where you're about to go in, get into a car accident literally by yourself. Yeah. Um, so I can see both. I can see both but sides. But also because you're in the NFL doesn't make you you know like oh yeah I'm the man I can do whatever the fuck I want you know it's pretty much how the cops could have handled it and if he was just compliant maybe just roll down the window regardless of how hard he fucking knocked on your window you know just. Hey, you know, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing today, man. How you react is how they'll react. Yeah. The first thing you say is, "Don't knock on my window like that." Come on. That's just that's just common sense. It doesn't give you just because you're a super NFL superstar. Don't get me wrong. Love him, great player. But his reaction, oh, I want to be in law enforcement. But that's how you're going to treat law enforcement. Doesn't make sense. He said that. Correct. Tyler, wait, Tyreek Hill said that in the post uh, press conference. Correct. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, if I were to ever run. Run away from Tyree Kill, you're you're you're, you're caught. Yeah, you're caught immediately. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like that's one so, benefit of being an NFL running back is you're gonna get caught. By yeah, the you're guy. fucked. So uh, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Um, like I said, I agree with some. You know how they handle it was a little excessive, but like I said, it wasn't the law enforcement. It's how. You know, both parties pretty much escalated it together. And then once the cops were like, we're not taking your shit anymore, that's when Tyreek Hill, and that's when everyone's like, oh, but he wasn't doing... Yeah, because he stopped. You realize, oh, shit, I'm not the man anymore. They're going to fucking take my freedom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how about you listen to them? They're not being... Like I said, all law enforcement aren't bad. Some people handle things different. But you also don't treat people with respect. Yeah. You know? Speaking goes of, both ways. Speaking of treating people with respect, Daniel Jones is having a real problem as quarterback the New York Giants. The guy can't get out of his own way. He's throwing more interceptions than he's throwing touchdowns to the other team. Um, Ray, I wanted to show you this real quick. <laughs> Guy can't catch a break. I mean, New York fans are pretty um, they are pretty aggressive as is, but I thought this was kind of funny. Watch, Ray. You suck! <laughs> it's rough. You know what's funny? They used to call him Danny Dimes, and now one of the guys called Danny Pennies. <laughs> <laughs> They're like I, Danny Pennies. <laughs> I don't know, dude. He should pull a McGregor and just start throwing shit at him. Why not? Be a heel. Fuck it. He doesn't got nothing else to lose. He's about to be pulled. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't even know who the backup is. Simon, do you know who the backup is for the Giants? It's, uh, exactly. Put him in. Uh, fuck oh, it. Oh, that's terrible. That's even worse. Fuck it. 
But he did have good. He did have a good playoff uh, for the Seahawks, didn't he? At one point, Drew Luck. I thought he did. Fuck it. Toss him in there. Yeah. <laughs> he shows up maybe two games out of the season, Daniel Jones, and they're like, oh, wait, there's hope. And then it's like the next game. Oh, no, there's not. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know. I think they're I think they're in real trouble. I'm yeah, going to no, be honest with you. They are. Uh, and that's Caleb Williams contributing. Hold on. For, <laughs> hold on. We got to get there. This is Caleb Williams contributing to the Bears hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> You got it, Caleb. You got it. You got it. You got it. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he's the guy in charge of the house. I don't know. He did nothing. You know what that? Re- you know what that reminds me of here. I'm going to pull this up. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of um, of Mark Zuckerberg trying to help out at the UFC. UFC. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'll put it in there just so you have it. But look at top left. That was Ray. Look at this top oh, left. Oh no! Look I at remember him. when this. Look happened. at Ray. I remember. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh huh. He's pay- yeah. he's right. paying yeah. to be there. He's look paying at him, Ray. To- yeah. He's so socially awkward, dude. Look at him socially awkward. <laughs> You've never seen that. You never seen that, bro. I remember because that was when Volkanowski was fighting. Uh, yes, yeah, so we went to we went there. Iliad- no. We were at no, we were at Hot Legs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought you were gonna say we were at the fight. No, I, was like, I wish, but yeah, this is when he fought Iliad Taporia and. Uh, <laughs> they be brought out Mark Zuckerberg with him, and uh, you're just standing there awkward, and he's just pay he's paying them to be there essentially, and uh, yeah, that was that was really ridiculous. But same shit that Caleb did this weekend is what Mark does at UFC fights. So yeah, I don't know. I'm sick of he's his. Just happy to be there essentially. Yeah. I'm sick of his shit. <laughs> Am I doing good? I don't know. I'm sick of his shit, but also I'm sick and tired of the um of how not even just not that most so much the athletes but it's the people that come to watch the games yes I is i mean we're done with um travis kelsey and his brother what's his brother's name again jason kelsey jason yeah. jason. jason now is an analyst on um sunday football if they talked about how he his luggage got lost and that he had to get a new shirt and then they're like where'd you get the shirt from and he's like lululemon and of course he's sponsored by Lululemon. Lululemon. Can we have that in post? Yeah. It's <laughs> my head blowing so up. <laughs> but they're cut to Travis Kelsey because everything's Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Dude, I almost threw up when I saw them at the U.S. Open doing this. It's so staged. It's so seventh grade homecoming. It, watch. It's annoying as fuck. Hold on. They're singing to fucking... Also, can we talk about his stupid Gucci orange Julius hat? Can we talk about that? What it's not. He looks like one of those like German guys. He looks like, like, about he to looks like he's serving hot dogs and milkshakes to Orange Julius. By the way, shout out to Orange Julius if you want to sponsor us. We'd love that because I love a good Orange Julius yeah, drink. Be, Who doesn't? Great. That'd be great, right, yeah. Simon? Yes, fantastic. Let's finish this. Look at how annoying she is. She has no tits. <laughs> Oh my God, oh, <laughs> Jesus! You know who she is. You know who she is. She's the girl that you bring. She's the girl that you bring, and her dad's the one that drove. But you're definitely checking out the other chicks around her, like for sure. I, I'll be honest with you, man. With all these distractions, he looks like I dude. Really, he's he's divvying out beers at, at uh, what's what's the, the German beer fest? Yeah, I was gonna say he looks like a German guy. Fucking beer fest over <laughs> here. At fucking, uh, he looks ridiculous, but. Honestly, I think he's not going to have the best season. Simon could probably t- chime in a little bit more with that. I think he's going to—he's not going to have what people expect to be the Travis Kelsey of a couple I, years ago. I think it's going to fall off drastically. I don't know. Simon and I said that we said either it's Cincinnati or I think Kansas City gets the three P because they're the—they're in, they're in the Illuminati. I have a prediction, <laughs> and I'll just like I said, we'll have Simon touch upon it later. I think. Joey Joey fucking Burries is going to come up and he's going to beat Yo. Mahomes like he always literally does out of nowhere and then have a continue shit season right. afterwards. Good call. So. Look what I look what I have for you right here. Joe Burrow and look who is at practice with him. Look at this. Ray, I'm thirsty and when I'm thirsty and I need energy, what do you suggest? Brady, try this Valor energy. What? Give it a shot. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's nice, creamy. Uh, it's the first nitronized uh, energy drink there is right now. So, yeah, delicious, right? You oh fired up? Let's fucking go. What? 
Thank you. Holy cow. I feel like I have the energy of like Simon Weiss. Yeah, right? The guy that does make things pay. pay. It's like, the, it's, yeah, it's crazy, right? This is fantastic. Is there other flavors? Yeah, there is. What? Yeah, it's crazy. Guys, check them out. Check them out. Hey, and if you do, if you like orange cream anything, this is the drink to get. Why is he standing like that? Why is he standing like that, though? What, what's with the um, Guess who's taking the video? Guess who's taking the video, right? Why is he? Is that still too loud? Guess who took the video? P. Diddy. No, P. He Diddy's, he's at Cincinnati's practice. Yeah, they're like, he's why not is... A, he's not arrested? What's going on? Oh, no. No, all those allegations are gone. Uh, everything that P. Diddy, all the, all the fire he's under... Uh, is gone. So he's standing like that for a reason. Okay. So Did I you see now. how he was standing? Yeah. I'll make sure to get you these videos too, David. Um, but uh, I just thought that was really weird. Uh, another thing that I thought was really weird, Kendrick Lamar is going to be doing the halftime show. Do we care? Do we care? Do I we mean, care about the halftime show anymore? You know what? I'm not going to lie. Not Like Us was a great fucking song, but then like a year from now, it's like, they not like us? It's like, all right. <laughs> like, all right. Are we still really going off? It's like, all right, next year, after this year, not like us. I'm like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there comes a point with a song where, you know, or am I really going to be, I can't wait for him to say not, you know, sing Not Like Us at yeah. fucking halftime in five, six months from now? I could literally, <laughs> I could literally care less. I know. It's it, already been overplayed fucking it was cool for a minute by the way yeah. i don't know if you guys know my favorite my favorite since you guys asked my favorite <laughs> i was wondering my favorite band back in the day uh because i'm white as fuck uh is creed right back in the day was creed bro Still these guys is. are so mean? old watch this i'm just gonna i'm gonna show you this because it's going somewhere creed the other night was ray was fucking rocking dude and i got chills and bad they were, watching this shit they were the watch. best halftime show ever <laughs> David, don't make that face. <laughs> no, Your screensaver is a husky, all right? Come on. But look at Scat. You have at, to like this. Look at Stap, dude. Look at Stap. He's still moving and shaking like he did back in the day. Money. By the way, also. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Creed fan, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the reason why we have you on the show, right? Uh, it is ridiculous. And also, you even know what's even more ridiculous, Ray, is seeing guys like me that are in... I'm, I watch the guys in the back. I don't really watch him. Watch these guys' reaction when the song really kicks off. Watch. Hold on. Watch them do... Here's the kicker. And then watch these 40 to 50-year-old men lose their minds. Watch this guy. Watch the bottom. Look at him. It's a good song. Dude. It's a good it's song. It is a great Simon, song. Thank you. Look at them. Guys are losing their minds. Everyone sells finance. Fantastic. You're yeah, like, Brady, what does that even yeah, have to yeah. do with anything? Well, I'm going to show you. This is why I'm on the show. This, this. is, <laughs> <laughs> this is why. <laughs> here's, the best, here's the best Creed uh, halftime situation I've ever seen. Hold on. Here we go. Yeah. Look at it. Look at it. We're this, also <laughs> this is when Scott Stapp was, uh, was doing drugs. This is 2001, dude. We were thriving, right? You were negative, too. I think next episode, we should do a whole hour breakdown of Creed's uh, rise and downfall. <laughs> <laughs> we've, turned in, we've turned into, what is it? Behind the, Ray. Ray, we've turned into behind the music. Look at him. Epic. Whoa. That was ridiculous and funny. Who got Cirque du Soleil for this show? He's got great hair, That's though. a Pearson's jersey, by the way. Back in the day. Anyways. Uh, Back in the day. Do we need a break after this <laughs> <laughs> or after that? Is that too much, fellas? And that's our halftime show. <laughs> um, sticking with football, Ray. Sticking with football. Tom Brady started his new job as an announcer, right, for Fox. I listened to it. Simon liked it. I liked it. Did you like it? Did you think it was too much? Was it too analytic or was it too, was it not too personal? Do you think it was as bad as Tony Romo's debut? What's your take, Ray? Yeah, Tony Romo sucks. Nice. No, I'm kidding. Um, cue the cue he, Creed. He's like, can you take me high? Um, Tom Brady, how he did his analytics, uh, it was more player based in terms of he broke it down specifically as a player, not an analyst. So it was different. So yeah, cue it. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I, can't, yeah. I can't. I can't not listen to Creed hey, sorry, for man. more than a minute. Listen, it's there, and I gotta put um, it on. You know that. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, he broke it down more specifically, and you could feel the passion behind his words, and that's why he was stuttering. You know, a few times people got on his ass for that, but for the most part, you could feel the passion. He loves the fucking sport, and he gave us a breakdown specifically like that that analysts don't do that are in tune with the huddle of what the players are thinking, probably post routes. Um, he was breaking down a, a, a play that Dak Prescott was going to go out and uh, go against Cleveland's right. defense. He was bringing all that he was inside doing this? information. Yeah, correct. And I was like, does he have a headache? What is this? So he's like, yeah. no, he's actually looking at the pass coverage. Correct, yeah. So, I mean, I, I like it. I'm excited to see where Tom goes with this. I mean, he is the GOAT. I'm uh, biased because I am from New England. And, yeah. Uh, Does he look like he's um, aging backwards? I mean, the guy's jawline. He's, he's drinking blood for some. Is that what it is? Probably. Do you think he misses Giselle, Ray? Probably. Poor guy. Would you he, miss Giselle, just, though? I mean, it's Tom Brady. He I know, but would you miss Giselle? Like, what? I mean, if it's me as of right now, that's the person <laughs> I am. Yeah. I mean, but if I'm fucking Tom Brady, it's a whole other ball game. You know what I mean? That's but, so uh, funny. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll miss Giselle right now. But <laughs> that's so um, funny. Yeah, I mean, he could do whatever the fuck he wants. He's the greatest of all time. Do you ever have you ever heard the conspiracy about the cover of Madden football? Tell me, tell me, David. Brady. You ever heard of the conspiracy of Madden football? Every single guy that's been on the cover of Madden football has been hurt before week one and hasn't played. Every single guy. Do you know who's on the cover? I'll show you. Christian McCaffrey. And totally destroyed a lot of people's fantasies this is on week one. Totally. But here, I'm going to show you. I want, I want to show you this because it's just kind of interesting the way this guy breaks it down. I didn't know. That's a real stat? That's a real stat. That's a real really? thing. It's called the Madden curse. Yep. Hold on. With Christian McCaffrey's guys about to chop Madden it up cover first. athlete. 49ers fans are hoping that he can elude the Madden curse the same way he eludes defenders. Let's take a look at three players who failed to do so. First on the list is Rob Gronkowski. Coming off of a dominant 72 catch, 1,176 yard, 11 touchdown, first team all pro season in 2015. I like this guy's face. Gronk was named the cover athlete in Madden the following year. In his cover season, he started the year missing the what? first two games due to a hamstring injury and then was limited in the following two games due to the same hamstring. The injury bug bit him later in the season too as he missed a game due to a pulmonary contusion before a herniated disc knocked him out. Oh, he's really season. giving it the whole Next details. Next is Antonio Brown. In the five seasons <laughs> leading up to his cover year, yep. Brown averaged 116 catches, Gronk, like, 1, 1,596 yards and 10 like touchdowns per injury. season and was widely Injuries. regarded as Antonio a Brown had a receiver meltdown. in the NFL. Yeah, and, <laughs> Even yeah. in his cover year, Brown was able to put up 104 catches, almost 1,300 yards, and 15 touchdowns. However, his off-the-field antics led to a falling out with the Steelers and he was traded to the Raiders. In Vegas, there were numerous off-the-field issues such as a cryo-chamber mishap Ugh. and a bout with the league over his helmet. After numerous other issues, Brown was released by the Raiders without even playing a game. He was promptly signed by New England. I forget he played for New England. One game before he was Who else we got? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> his NFL career was over. And finally, yeah. we have Peyton Hillis. Hillis is one of Who? the prime examples for those who don't know who he is. But anyways, there's a Following a standout curse, season. So when Simon said, uh, I think there was at one point, and nothing against Simon, his picks are usually doing great. But... Uh, <laughs> not this one. <laughs> but, but McCaffrey, the whole McCaffrey thing, he had any time touchdown. I was like, he's not playing. But... Um, but you know what? He's here to redeem himself for week two. Well, so we'll see what he has to say coming down the let's line. Let's put it this way. Hopefully he doesn't have a fucking dis – destroys his body like Gronk. He has yeah. a mental meltdown like Antonio Brown and then not even exist like whoever this guy is from the Browns because I don't know who that is. Yeah. Um, you have something about Ravens practice. What do you got for me? Play the clip. Just play the clip? Play the clip. You don't want to tease the people up at all? No, play the Nothing? clip, guys. This is what the Ravens are doing in practice. I think it's a little extreme. <laughs> um, it's uh, – it's interesting to say it's an interesting technique, but let's put it this way. They are ready for all conditions. Stop it, dude. They are ready. They Hold are doing on. fumble recovery drills, getting sprayed with fire hoses. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Um, yeah. Hold on. You just had it. I know. I don't um, know what happened. Hold on. There we go. There it is. These, they're getting sprayed in the face and the ball with uh, hoses are as they try to recover oh, the ball. Oh, this is the Ravens. Yes, yeah, the Ravens. No, it's a high school Wait, football team. It does look like high school football. No, it's why yeah. are they spraying these dudes in the face? This I don't understand. A, yeah, that's this is, is that real. the coach? Is that John Harbaugh? That's me right there. That is John Harbaugh. That is John Harbaugh. Hell that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, they're getting ready. Yeah, I don't get that drill. We didn't do drills like that. Yeah, that, I think they're really upgrading here. So I mean, let's put it this way. Uh if it's raining. Uh, if the Ravens are playing in rain or in some form of terrible weather conditions, I'm putting the money on them. Because if they're fucking preparing for this shit, they're ready for at all any weather conditions. Yeah. Moneyline Ravens when it's pouring rain outside. Done deal. You guys heard it first.
Wow. Uh, speaking of being prepared, um, NCAA week one was great. It was great. We're not going to really talk too much about it. We're going to leave that up to Simon. Uh, but also I wanted to, th- this I thought was interesting. We want to talk about guys preparing for, I don't know what that was for the Ravens, but this kid is preparing for the NFL by looking like Pat Mahomes. If you don't know who we're talking about, uh, Raiola, Raiola, am I saying that his last name? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> um, it's you show so much I don't care about uh, NCAA care football yeah. that much. This kid l- it literally is ripping off Pat Mahomes' whole uh, persona, his whole persona, even how he warms up, his down to his number. I like the music. Does he talk like Kermit the Frog? Because then he's him. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, Dylan Raiola, that's what it is. Yeah, he plays for Nebraska. Anyways, the kid's really good. He does his hair just like, uh, does his hair just like Pat Mahomes. He talks just like Pat Mahomes. He wears Pat Mahomes' like Ray Bans or not some Ray Bans, but he wears those like, those like uh, Pit Viper sort of go- glasses. Whatever. Good for the kid. If you make a million dollars from going to Nebraska to an NFL team and you crush it, fantastic. It's going to be weird when you play against Pat Mahomes. Raymond, as we all know, UFC 306 is happening at the Sphere. Again, like I said, um, can we start with tickets? You were talking about ticket sales. What is happening with the ticket sales? And then we'll get to picks because I know you've done your extensive research on it, but I'm perplexed. Why are ticket sales low? I mean, the, realistically, they uh, Dana White and the UFC were going to build this into a giant spectacle, which I'm sure it will be. Uh, they dumped a shit ton of money into this, over $50 million worth of production costs that is leading into this, making this one of the most anticipated UFC events. Uh, of course, the card and the people on it maybe doesn't follow that, but... Um, that's kind of why it's dropped drastically in terms of the card. Maybe Sean O'Malley isn't as big as a draw that they wanted to, and just the people in general on the card are not as marketable or mainstream. Of course, there is a lot behind the scenes that led to this point, which, like I said, all leads to it's UFC 3. Is it UFC 306? Is it UFC Noche? Is it UFC sponsored by Riyadh season in fucking Las Vegas in the United States? I don't know anymore. Easy on plan, so, dude. Easy know, on plan. And... Uh, I'm not too I'm not too sure what's happening behind uh, behind the scenes, but uh, clearly they are taking a massive L with uh, ticket sales because originally on floor seats were twelve to fifteen thousand dollars, and now they drastically only are a couple grand. And uh, nosebleeds tickets were two grand, and now they're at eight hundred dollars, and they haven't filled seats. Which the whole point was, uh, and you know, there's a lot that led to this was actually Connor was going to fight on uh, yeah, this, I the wish, sphere with uh, Michael Chandler. I wish he was fighting that. A lot. Everyone does. Everyone wants to see him come back. Is he going to come back to the UFC? I have intel that I can't say right now, but it doesn't look like it. As Do you of think right he's now. ever going to come back? So uh, I know David's. He uh, he's a guest. There's there's a. I, I don't even want to leak this information because I could definitely be heavily sued. Leak it. Yeah. Leak it. <laughs> um, let's just say. Heavily I, sued. Sue me for what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who's watching this? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think that there's a lot of behind the scenes between Connor and Dana right now, and uh, Connor's obligations are somewhere else. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, he said and, he's uh, going to be president of Ireland. <laughs> He's, you saw that? He's he's. Let's put it this way: it, it looks like he's gonna do something else outside of the UFC. That's Porn, probably, probably. He could. <laughs> he do, liked it. <laughs> realistically, he could do whatever the fuck he wants, and it would be gold. So um, he's a character of its own. But like I said, that all ties into why tickets went plummeting. They released the card. There's people that open up the main card in Ronaldo Rodriguez and Ode Osborne, going, "Why is that the main card opener? Nobody knows who the fuck they are." Yeah, I and don't you know, know who they are for flyweight. Is, yeah, yeah, correct. And realistically, it is a good fight, but is should it be on the main card of 306 at the fucking sphere being $50 million worth of production? No. So uh, there's a lot of question marks. Of course, it's tailored to. And here's the thing, which is going to tailor into picks for me. It's a business at the end of the day. Yeah. You have to remember, when you're picking, it's not realistically, you know, set up as, oh, these two are stylistically going to go at it. There's a reason why these fucking people are fighting each other. And I'm not saying all, but the majority of fights that happen in MMA are picked by the UFC reps and Sean Shelby that actually they favor one person that they want to win and market moving forward. So there's a lot of behind the scenes that not a lot of people know when they just go, oh, this person's going to win. Guys, it's fucking Mexican Independence Day. 
you're not going to think at least 80% or 75% of those Mexicans are going to win on that card. Favor towards the Mexican sides on Noche. There's no reason why they're going to dump all this money into production, all the money into Independence Day and, and, and tailor to the Mexican market and then not have the Mexicans win the fight. Let's be real here, guys. I'm not saying all the Mexicans are going to win this Saturday, but let's. if you guys have, which, like I said, I'll dive into picks more, the majority of Mexicans will win the fight at Noche. I have a question. Boom. I have a question. Why don't they have the fight on Cinco de Mayo? <laughs> this... <sighs> And also, real quick, wouldn't that make more sense? Correct. And also, also, not a lot of people know this, and it's going to be weird with this. Canelo Alvarez is fighting this fucking Saturday, who has a massive is he really? Mexi- exactly has a max massive Mexican yeah. following. Also, I have another question for having it at the Sphere. I'm not going to be watching these guys fighting in front of me. I'm going to be watching the massive fucking screen. So that's the only hard part I have wrapping my brain around the whole thing. I'm watching the screen. Why would I watch this massive screen if I can watch them right here? I think that's what's throwing a lot of people off. Well, you know what I'm ex- exactly. I mean, that's that's the whole thing. Which we're not there physically, of course. Being in person was probably a spectacle. Simon Katuna, and he's been there, yeah. but. Watching how the production is from regular UFC events now, how are we going to see it on TV and how it's going to be set up? Are we going to see almost like a double vision where we're watching the fight, but we can also see it in the background on live television? It's going to be strange. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's going to be the anticipation of how they're setting it up. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Chime in, David. Tell. It's fucking. I'm not going to be on the audio, but yeah, how do you, when you're watching it from home, what, is it just going to be in the background? Exactly, a hundred percent. So yeah, I didn't even, th- I didn't even, th- I didn't even think about that. Ex- <laughs> no, I've thought about all of this. Where I'm like, that's why it could be taking a dig. The, there's so many different factors that are leading to this. Like I said, I look at everything on a business perspective, and then that all tailors into my picks and my bets for MMA. Um, so it, it goes from not just through match, you know, at least stylistic matchups, you know, credentials, where they're good strengths, weaknesses, etc. But it's it's all it's gonna be. Weird. I'm not gonna lie. I'm very intrigued. It's either gonna be like I said, like Dana White, the best, greatest event ever, you know, ran, show ran, or it's going to be an absolute flop. Can it's we, one, there's going to be no in between. Can we go over your bets or over your picks? Yeah, I mean, I, I could go over my picks. Um, like I said, it's normally a 12 uh, or 12. It's usually 12 to 14. Um, Break it down uh, for the it's people. Now, it's now a 10-man card, which, like I said, that all leads now to production and fill time. So now, as fans of us watching, we're gonna what the fuck are we gonna be watching? Are we gonna be on watching the TV background of the sphere? Like, oh wow, looks really cool there, but I'm here at a bar. You know what I mean? So it's gonna be interesting what the time filler slots because it's all a it's all a run of show. Yeah. So, but leading go, into- go from lead. Can you do for us for like guys that don't know uh, that are done with UFC stuff in terms of sports betting? Um, can you go from least popular to to the most popular? Yeah, is I that mean, possible? Yeah, I mean, like I said, guys, uh, it, it's all filled. It's Mex- It's Noche. Uh, so we have all just about all Mexican fighters, whether it's they're fighting each other or there's everyone's a Mexican outside of no, actually everyone is. So um, the, the the first one I don't understand. I never heard of these girls, Yasmin uh, Yarg. I can't even pronounce it. I don't know those girls, so I'm not going to say it. Okay. I don't know why they're on the card. Doesn't make any sense. Maybe they're Mexican. But we're opening up. Yeah, <laughs> one is correct. <laughs> Um, but uh, the opening card is Raul Rosas Jr., and uh, he's the opening prelim. If anything, he should have been on the main card, but like I said, I don't understand that, whatever, uh, but they want to open up with a bang. Uh, he's huge markability. Kid's about still 19 years old. Um, he's taking on a, a, a Chinese fighter in... Uh, I can't pronounce this name either. Not the freak, or what is his name? The, what are they called? No, the no, zombie? No, no, that guy retired a, over a year ago. Oh, but, my bad. <laughs> the guy retired five years he ago. He was good, though. <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah, Korean zombie. Yeah. Um, but, no, this guy, uh, it's it's a tailored matchup for Raul Roses Jr. He's going to win this fight. Um, you know, it's stylistically perfect for him. The other, the Chinese fighter was taken down several times in his last fight. Um, I don't think he's going to get up. Um, I'll dive into more stuff. What, what I would say for a pick, but that's my pick for that. You have next card, uh, next fight, you have Edgar Chavez versus Joshua Van. Joshua Van was just knocked out recently, two months ago, by um, what's his name? Charles, uh, not Charles Johnson. Yeah, Charles Johnson, correct. And uh, he was winning the fight, dominating. I like, I like Van for this. Uh, Edgar Chavez is a tough Mexican, but stylistically, um, Joshua Van should piece him up on the feet. Uh, he's just, Edgar just is a tough Mexican. Okay. Um, 
Then you got a great matchup in Manuel Torres and, and uh, Ignacio Bahamandes. These are both two tough fucking... Yeah, say that ten times fast, Simon. It's going to be hard. Um, I like Manuel Torres for this pick. They're both very technical. Bahamandes is more of a tough, gritty fighter. I think Manuel Torres is more... Uh, he, he's, he's a better striker. He's more crisp. I like his style a lot, and I think he's more marketable moving forward with the UFC. Um, now, with Iriel, uh, next fight is Iriel Aldana versus Norma Dumont. Uh, I actually like, I'm going against the Mexican fighter here, and I'm picking Brazilian Norma Dumont. Uh, I think they had a similar opponent in Macy Chazan, and uh, Iriel, Irene Aldana was actually getting her ass beat by her until she got hit her with an upkick in the liver in the third round. And I actually know this because I bet on that fight, and I picked Irene to win. And I was like, I lost my fucking bet in a freak accident with a liver kick, and Macy went down. Um, Norma end up losing to a split decision with Macy, but um, very competitive. I like Norma as a uh, as a as a pick there. All right, so main card opener uh, we have um, Ronaldo Rodriguez versus Ode Osborne. Uh, it's almost even odds. I think Ronaldo is just a slight favorite. I like that a lot for uh, I like that a lot for Ronaldo Rodriguez. He's very big on social media. He's a Mexican fighter. Ode Osborne's coming off of two losses right now. Um, it's pretty much a tailor shot. Like I said, it's a business, guys. The UFC right. is tailoring. We have a big up-and-comer in Ronaldo Rodriguez. Huge, massive following with the Mexican crowd. Um, let's give him Ode Osborne. I think at the line right now is at a negative 140, which is just a slight favorite. I'm going to dump a lot of money into that fight. Okay. Um, so uh, the next fight I would probably say is Daniel Zell Huber uh, or Huber. Zell Huber. Uh, Zell Huber versus... Uh, That's a good fight. One's 15-1, yeah. and one, Esteban's 13-1. And, and Esteban Rebovics. Yeah, uh, so I'm luckily known the pleasure of knowing Esteban personally. Great guy. Love him. Um, his technical striking is out of this world, but so is Daniel, uh, Daniel's. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, it's tough to pick a winner for that fight. So what I'm going to say is... Dump, uh, dump the over. I think it's going to go to the distance. I think it's going to be a war. I think it's going to be fight of the night. If not, it's going to be up there for fight of the night without question. But like I said, with the Mexican card, you know, it's, there's going to be a lot of scraps on there. But I like the over and go in the distance on that Who fight. Like Next one I also see as being fight of the night is Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez. That's going to be a phenomenal fight. Um, like I said, another one where the UFC is teeing off in with the new, out with the old, is you got a rising star in Diego Lopez fighting a... You know, I don't want to say because he looked great in his last performance. He did. Brian he was Ortega, real good. Um, Older. But, man, I don't – there's so much behind it for the reschedule. I like Diego. Diego's so crafty. Everyone wants to give him shit for gassing out in the third uh, third period or the third round in the last fight against Danny Ege on short notice. Guys, it's fucking gangster for both guys to take the fight in fucking three-hour notice. So Diego Lopez is the pick. Um, he's a slight favorite. I think it's like he's a negative 175 uh, money line. I like it a lot. It could Brian Ortega ain't no slouch, man, but Diego... In terms of markability, the UFC's pushing him a lot. So uh, I like I like his stylistic matchup here. Brian Ortega has trouble, has had trouble already with making weight and cardio issues. So we'll see. He could come in prepared. But Diego Lopez is, is a fucking star in the sky that's shining. And he's going to fucking win. He's got a longer reach, too. Yeah, he's uh, he's creative. He's crafty. They're both jujitsu specialists. So the ground game, if it lands on the ground, is going to be very interesting to see. Uh, I'm excited for that fight, but I got Diego. Uh, the co-main event, uh, Valentin. Tina Shashenko versus Alexa Grasso. We really don't want to see it's a third time. I could give a flying fuck about it. People could find different. Uh, I have it going to the, dis the distance. Um, they both know each other. They're going to be more tentative fighting. They're going to kind of, they know, they already, they've been in there already for fucking, and now 20, uh, 25, almost fucking, f almost an hour in cage time. So they already know. They did the ultimate fighter. They know each other's strategies already going into it. It's going to go to the distance. I'm not too sure what the money line is there, but I'm sure people are going to be dumping on it. But could see a finish. Doubt it. Uh, main event, Sean O'Malley versus Marab Dawalishvili. Um, my takes on this, this is uh, – Everyone has different perspectives, you know. I think a lot of people are choosing Marab because they just want to see Sean O'Malley lose. And then also, you know, the oh, Sean's never been tested wrestling. He's a fighter, guys. And technically, I do the, the loss he has to Marlon Chito Vera, it was a little bit of a freak. I know it's always oh, checking leg kicks. Yeah, you know, sh shit happens sometimes. So in my mind, I do think Sean uh I'm just going to say it. I think Sean wins this fight. I think Sean's a sniper. I think Sean is 
you know, there's a reason why he is the champion. He's already faced tough competition in Peter Jan Aljo. Um, he's proved himself. Marab, of course, is a different style of pressure, which that's why I'm interested to see in terms of stylistic matchup. But the problem is uh, the past three fights, Marab has been rocked. And uh, his chin's a little questionable on my side. Henry Cejudo rocked fucking Marab Drawalishvili. And if Henry Cejudo, who's an Olympic wrestler, is rocking fucking Marab on the feet, you're telling me a sniper like Sean fucking O'Malley, who's so creative from distance and closing distance, is not going to rock Marab and waiting for that anticipation, whether it's a knee, uh, straight right step back. He's, 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 too, he's too much of a sniper. Um, I see it being uh, a knockout or TKO stoppage for Sean O'Malley. Uh, could, like I said, Marab could 100% pressure him for a couple rounds and maybe a later knockout by Sean. We'll see, but I like Sean. Nice. There you have it, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. That is Raymond Sherwood's picks for UFC 306. Not bad, right? Um, I mean, if we could afford the tickets, would you still go? I'd be there, man. I would love to see it. I mean, not saying we can't afford the tickets, but do I want to shell out a fucking thousand dollars for? You got to take out a loan to go there. You know what I mean? For sure. <laughs> like, gotta fucking... um, if you want more of Ray's picks, go to um, go to go to your social media, right? Yeah, Those yeah. It'll media. be on Make Vegas Pay. Uh, also, Make Vegas Pay. Yep. Uh, we're gonna end on uh, our favorite segment, which is Dick of the Week, and uh, actually, I love it. This is this is fantastic. Um, yes. <laughs> Shout out to to Simon Will Levis Ray you have uh, Let's see what you have for your Yeah dick, this guy uh, got into week. an argument And I just thought it was very funny about Let's see Of course She has a mask on <laughs> Watch, it gets better. <laughs> this man got into an argument and had the audacity to tell this guy, I'm an MMA trainer. You ever hear of Chuck Liddell? We train guys like that. How about Conor McGregor? Get away from me. As if that's going to deter the guy and go, oh my. He has no relation to these people. Yeah, the guy's like, no, what no, no. I still, I still want to fight. I still wanna... He's like, do you know them? He's like, yeah. He's, he's, probably, he's probably the guy that was in the octagon. He was calling the fight or some shit. He's not, no, he was nowhere near the octagon. I can tell you that. Um, um, but, uh, <laughs> Very strange altercation. I thought it was fucking hilarious. That guy is a character, and uh, good for him. Uh, this is my dick of the week. This is um, Quinn Ewers handles a dad and his son in the Michigan game, and the dad goes like this. Put the horns down, you fucking dick. What a dick. Look at this schmarmy-ass dad. I'm a defense attorney. Fucking dick. But Ewers handled it. He handled like a G, which was great. Um, so, yeah, that was my dick of the week. Anyways, so that's it. Great show, Ray. Fantastic I'm show. I'm looking forward to the next one. Guys, please subscribe to uh, The Mouthpiece, Make Vegas Pay. Uh, lots. We digested a whole shit ton of stuff for you guys. Uh, check us out on all the platforms. We're on everything. YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, you name it. Um, I've been Brady Matthews, your host. This has been The Mouthpiece. With Ray Sherwood. <laughs> oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And me, I guess. I'm guys. Here. We will see you next week. Thanks so much. Please tune in. Don't forget to subscribe. Adios. Take care. Peace.